Now that we've covered all the GraphQL operations in our GraphQL API with Hot Chocolate, we're going to move on to implementing services for data access. So specifically, we're going to have our services use Entity Framework to access a database. And this is pretty much essential to most applications, but this is also going to allow us to demonstrate more advanced Hot Chocolate GraphQL features in the future, such as data loaders, pagination, sorting, filtering, all that fun stuff. So that being said, first off, we're going to install some packages so that we can integrate with Entity Framework. So let's go to our project and manage NuGet packages. And we want hotchocolate.data.entityframework. And the reason we want this instead of just regular Entity Framework by itself is because Hot Chocolate will actually execute some resolvers in parallel. And by default, Entity Framework is going to freak out if you try and execute multiple operations at once. So this package will take care of that so that we can execute those queries in parallel. So let's install that. So as always with Entity Framework, we're going to have to create our DB context and also our DTOs that are going to describe how our data is going to be laid out in our database. So let's come over to our project. Let's create a new folder. Let's have DTOs and let's have services as well. And in services, I'm going to have my DB context. So let's create that. I feel like our application needs a name, but I'm just going to call this school db context so create that and we'll also create our dtos while we're here so as expected this is going to kind of reflect our graphql schema where we're going to have a course dto as well as a student dto and lastly we'll also have an instructor dto so as i mentioned this is going to reflect our schema so i'm going to bring that up just for reference i believe we have this in our queries we have our course type so for now on this course type, I'm just going to grab all of these properties and move those over to our DTO and just change them from here. So we are still going to have an ID and a name. We are going to have a subject. I'm going to come back to this, but let's get rid of this hot chocolate attribute we have here. We don't need that. For instructor, we're going to point to our instructor DTO. And for our students, we're going to point to our student DTO. Let's also have a foreign key property for this instructor. So that's going to be a GUID and we'll call this instructor ID by convention. So now all we have left is subject. So we could just import this from our GraphQL schema, but I feel like our DTOs should not reference our schema. So we could just redefine a different subject enum here, but I feel like what I'm going to do instead is just move the subject enum into a layer that's kind of in between our DTOs and our GraphQL schema, which might not be the cleanest approach. Like maybe it would be a good idea to have your subject enum also in your DTOs layer. But instead, I'm just going to have a models folder here and we're going to add a new item here. We'll call this subject. It's not going to be a class, just going to be that enum. And let's just move that all in here. So cut it out, paste it in here, delete it from our course type. And now I'm going to import that in our schema. I believe other places in our schema actually referenced that subject. So I'm kind of happy about this because we had our mutations namespace referencing our queries namespace, which felt off. So now we've kind of moved everything to a centralized location in our model, but that should be everything that needs to be updated in our schema. Let's head on back to our course DTO import subject from our centralized models namespace. Now let's move on to instructor ID. So I'm going to open up my instructor type on my GraphQL schema and just grab all of these properties. And in fact, I don't think any of these are going to be different. So we got our primary key and then just all of the regular scalar properties. So that should be all good. And then lastly, we have our student DTO going to head into my student type. And this should be pretty much the same as instructor went where we can just paste all of that in here get rid of our hot chocolate attributes. Definitely don't want those here. And that should be good to go. So now that we have all of our DTOs defined, let's head back to our DB context and define DB sets for each of those DTOs. So our DB context knows that we want a table for each of those objects. So we're going to have a DB set, import that from Entity Framework for our course DTO, import that from our DTO's namespace, and this will be the courses. And then we're gonna have two more DB sets, one for instructor DTO, these will be our instructors, and then student DTO, these will be our students. So now that our DB context is ready, we can register that in our services. So we're gonna take our services and we're gonna add a pooled DB context factory. So let's specify our DB context type, the school 
db context. And now we just need to configure it. So I am just going to use SQLite here because in my opinion, that's the easiest to set up, but we are going to need a package for that. So let's just search for SQLite and we actually want microsoft.entityframerecord.sqlite. So let's install that. And now we can use SQLite. So there we go, import that from microsoft.entityframerecord. And now our connection string, let's actually load that from our app settings.json. So we're gonna have a variable for that here. And we're gonna have to get that from our configuration, which isn't in our startup class. So we're gonna have to get that through the constructor. So let's define a field for it. This should be the I configuration. So import that from Microsoft.extensions. And we should be able to get that through the constructor. So let's generate that. And our connection string is gonna be from that configuration. So we can get connection string and we'll just call ours default. So this is gonna get loaded from our app settings.json. So let's head over to our app settings.json and we are gonna have a connection strings key right here. And we're going to have default and typical SQLite -like connection string. We're just going to have data source equals and then the name of our database. We'll call this school.db. So this should be all good here. We're getting this error because our school DB context does not inherit from DB context as it should. There we go. Error goes away. And our DB context definitely would not work if we didn't inherit from db context so that's a good fix right there so now next up as always with NED framework we are going to have to create migrations for our database so let's open our api in a terminal and the command to create a migration i hope i remember this so it's dot net ef migrations oh i was so close but i just looked at the documentation because i could just never remember this so we're going to add a migration and we'll call this initial. And we're actually gonna build error real quick. And this is related to moving subject to the model's namespace. So gotta import it here in our course type input as well. There we go. Let's try migrations again. And we messed it up again. So our query type also needs to import subject. That was a pretty big breaking change. Let's try again. Let me build first, make sure it actually builds. There we go, successful. So we should be able to actually add the freaking migration now oh and i forgot we need microsoft.anyframerecord.design as a package so let's install that real quick this is not going as expected but that's okay so let's search for that package and install that real quick and try again this is only the fourth time not too bad and hopefully last but not least we also have to add a constructor in our db context that accepts db context options so let's do that real quick so we can actually just generate that and we want these options to be for our school db context so we got the constructor let's try i think this is like the sixth time but we should get it here there we go we got our migrations so looking good got all of our tables in here and actually i think our relationships are kind of messed up so our students table is going to have a course dto id but in reality our student should be capable of being in many courses so i think what we have to do on our student dto is define another property here and this is going to be an i enumerable of course dtos and we'll call this courses and this will tell NND framework that we want this many to many relationship between courses and students. And I think I actually also want a navigation property on instructor DTO just to describe that one instructor can have many courses. So let's remove that old migration. So .NET EF migrations remove. So there we go, successfully removed. And let's add initial again. And now this definitely worked this time because we have this join table for course DTO to student DTO, which reflects the many-to-many -many relationship between courses and students. So now we could apply our migrations from the terminal down here, but I think what I wanna do instead is automatically apply migrations on startup. So let's actually go into our program.cs, and this is where we can actually apply our migrations against our database. So we're gonna need our host, and we get that back from this build method right here. So we build our host using the host builder, and eventually we are going to run our host. But in between all this, what we're gonna do is take our host services and we're gonna get a required service here. So import that from Microsoft extensions and we want our school DB context. And actually before I get too far in this, I already know that our school DB context is registered as scoped. So first we are going to have to create a scope. So we get back this I service scope which eventually is going to have to be disposed so let's wrap that in a using and now we can take our scope and take our service provider and resolve not 
a straight up school DB context. And the reason we don't do that is because we registered a DB context factory, not the actual DB context. So we are going to get an IDB context factory for our school DB context. So put that into a variable. And now this is gonna have to be in a using statement, but we're gonna get back our school DB context and we'll take our context factory and create our DB context. And now all we have to do is take our context, take our database and migrate. And that'll apply our migrations on startup. So let's go ahead and run this and see if our database gets generated. So no errors, we successfully started. And if we look over here in our project, we have our school Dot db. So we finally got our database set up and I think I'm going to stop myself right here and actually split this episode into two parts. So this part one was all about just setting up entity framework and getting our database set up, which actually took longer than expected. So this part was kind of like a prerequisite for the next part, which is going to be fully focused on GraphQL and hot chocolate. I suppose like I could have just done all of this DB setup offline, but I want to be fully transparent in this series. If you already have a database, then hopefully you skip this video and are moving along to the next part. So hopefully this was helpful for getting set up with any framework. Of course, next time we're gonna do much more fun things, but if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.